Hello everyone, Sony just had their 2021 Investor Relations Day for the Games and Network Services division, which would be PlayStation, and there's a lot of interesting things to go over. They had a whole slideshow with a number of uh, factoids and things that uh, relate to the PlayStation business, so let's go over all that stuff. So just for clarity's sake, we're going over this now because there's a lot to unpack here. So I know LTPS is tomorrow, but we've already got a lot of stuff to go over with that, including uh, later today, which would be uh, the Horizon Forbidden West Day to play. So we'll just talk about that tomorrow. Uh, but right now, at least, let's go over this presentation, which is called PlayStation, The Road to Profitable Growth. So they cover a few points that we're already pretty familiar with, like calendar year 2020 earning record profit, despite it being a console launch year, which typically has expected losses, like you can see on the graph with PS2, PS3, and even PS4. Also, PS5 being the most successful hardware launch, just beating PS4 by 200,000 units. But the next slide details the expected growth and why Sony believes in PS5 and the console space. We can see calendar year 2025, the console market can reach $88 billion, that's in USD, with compound growth at 7% year on year. We also have a revenue split on hardware, physical software, and digital downloads, and expectedly physical software will see a decline, but still holding relatively well. Uh, downloads would see tremendous growth, 14% CAGR, uh, about $59 billion by 2025. We can also see Sony's aggressive target for market share where PS4 sits around 45%. They want to hit over 50% with PS5. And I would imagine this is in the context of what we're talking about. So hardware, physical software, uh, digital downloads, and this would be in the console space. So directly competing against Microsoft and Nintendo. They want to have, uh, they want to be the majority here. Sony also mentions console ownership is strong through multiple generations. Consumers are sticking with PS5 all the way back to the PS1. More women are playing PS4 and PS5 versus what we saw back in the day with PS1. And there's more growth expected in markets outside of North America, Europe, and Japan. So for 2020, this is about 10% and could be more than 10% uh, as the years go on versus 1% uh, a long time ago. Now, there's also a slide for the software lineup at launch, and this seems like a good reminder for those that forgot that when PS4 launched, it was a little bit underwhelming, whereas PS5 is off to a really good start. Also, under the PS5 section, we can see God of War Ragnarok, and we can quickly explain that, well, technically, Sony's never called it that, so I know when you're online looking at this stuff, uh, it's pretty much expected, and most people assume it's called that, but we've never gotten an official title directly from Sony, so this would have been the first time where Sony calls it this. However, we're finding out that uh, it seems like whoever made this presentation, they just did a Google search and pulled this image off of Google. So it still looks like we don't have an official title for the next God of War game, but I understand that most people are expecting it's probably going to be called uh, something like that. Uh, console economics is next. This is a good one. So we've learned the standard edition PS5 is about to break even next month. Now, normally in the console industry, loss leading can go on for quite a while, years in fact, but with PS4 and now PS5, that's clearly changing. And we do learn in a later slide that the standard PS5 is very much the disc console, which is also sort of expected because the digital edition, as I've uh, explained prior to PS5 coming out, this is why I thought that machine was going to cost 450 because you don't you don't save that much money by taking out the disc drive. So I understand that on the back end, all those uh, players are forced into the digital storefront, which is a higher uh, revenue split for Sony in many situations. So. That makes sense, but purely on manufacturing the console, they're probably still losing money on that machine, and they will for uh, probably a few more months, if not uh, even longer than that. Uh, we also see consoles directly from revenue play a much smaller role nowadays, so that's also expected, but we've got a ratio to finally put on that, which is 80-20 now for the overall revenue at SIE. You can see software, services, peripherals, that's now 80%. Sony is also planning on having their best second fiscal year for new hardware, beating PS4's 14.8 million consoles sold and fiscal year 2022. They're also planning to beat PS4's uh, 20 million in that time frame as well. And there's other slides just reaffirming these points. So there's more engagement versus PS4. There's more growth in monetization versus PS4. Uh, after that, they also cover PS4 directly. So probably one of the bigger takeaways is that uh, for big game launches still to come, we can see Far Cry 6, but we only have Horizon listed. So if you were still curious about the next God of War and if it's cross-gen, this might be an indicator that it's purely PS5. Now, this presentation isn't going to reveal everything, but that might be a little indicator there, so we'll keep uh, our eyes peeled on that once we finally see more God of War. The next few slides cover the growth in key areas like free-to-play and PS Plus, but they also touch on some new growth sectors, so there will be more investment in China, physical retail, first-party, cloud and services, VR, and a beyond console approach. 
So covering first party, we're told again, just like every single quarter, this is not new information, but every single site always runs with this as a headline. Uh, external partnerships, merger and acquisition, investing in SA internally. We always see that they're always doing it. So there's just more confirmation there. Uh, probably social and services is the newer bit there that we'll talk about in a second. The off console approach, we see here that Horizon Zero Dawn's PC port had a massive return on investment of more than 250% for what was a port job. This is kind of what I was getting at when saying you're leaving money on the table since it's a pretty straightforward job to port over a game that's already completed its lifetime sales on console. So like we said, Horizon's not going to move another 3, 4 million units on PS4. It's just not going to happen. So that's what Sony's doing here. A uh, big part of this, though, is that it looks like they are targeting new areas like China, India, and Russia through PC releases. Uh, and we also see that Uncharted 4 is the next planned PC release, so that is something that we did not find out until seeing these slides. And then games as a service. We should expect more service-led games from first party, both on and off console. That's pretty interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but next up, PlayStation Now, we finally have a new number of total subscribers, 3.2 million. So this is, again, frankly, an embarrassing number, but I think we all know that Sony can do a lot better here. And the positive takeaway is that it is seeing insane growth year on year. Uh, we can also see that Horizon Forbidden West and Miles Morales are apparently slated to come to PS Now. That's pretty huge. Those are recent big IP, though if I know Sony, <laughs> it'll probably just be the PS4 versions. Uh, the playtime split, though, this is also pretty revealing. So we can see that for the streaming playtime, it's actually a lot higher than I would think. You can see the introduction of the download option. That's where it takes the majority, because obviously you can download the PS4 games, get native play, full resolution. Why wouldn't you do that? But... I'm actually quite surprised to see that even today you've got the streaming playtime at about 40, 50 percent, well, not quite 50, but it's a it's a decent amount. And we know that that is in all likelihood only PS3 titles. I don't know why somebody would stream the PS4 stuff. So it seems like uh, that's a lot of PlayStation 3 playtime on PS now, which is uh, really encouraging. Actually, a part of me was actually thinking at some point Sony might just remove the PS3 games because that's that's a, a large rack of a. Uh, the PS3 server blades running and I just didn't think people were really uh, playing those games all too much uh, but then again I think if you were to see a massive improvement to PS Now subscribers you would see that playtime start to drop dramatically so well for the PS3 stuff you'd see it drop dramatically now there is also a slide for VR on PS5, but there's nothing new in there. And then the Beyond Console slide. This just shows us some usual suspects. So mobile, commerce, web and app services, they're gonna wanna put all their money into these places and start pulling a lot of money from it. Um, and we'll talk about that too. Uh, and then finally we can see the group collaboration. So that's things like Sony Music, Sony Pictures, Sony Electronics. We can see PS5 bundles with Bravia televisions. We can see PlayStation productions. We can see that PS Plus video pass things like that so let's really unpack and digest all of this by probably stating first off i mean because i think this gets lost in a lot of people when we talk about this during ltps whenever sony has a quarter quarterly report fiscal year report uh, this is an investor relations meeting they're speaking directly with the investor as in the people that are putting money up to have part ownership of Sony. They want the company to have good performance and it is a business. This is why um, you sometimes have to separate your fan opinion from what the company is doing, right? So when it comes to like the PC stuff, which I know a lot of people are just getting super emotional and really irrational about, but um, this is just what the company is uh, slowly but surely doing, right? So Microsoft got there a lot quicker. They're, uh, they tend to be more reactionary and trying new things. Uh, they do that much faster than, when, than how Sony approached as these things and as the company gets more and more comfortable with the idea of hey we're leaving a lot of money on the table they're going to start exploring it more aggressively so that's what we're seeing with uncharted 4 a little strange actually that it's not the uh, uncharted collection i think that would have been a better start just for consumers that are on pc and never uh, tried that franchise but we'll probably see a handful of titles because that's what we were told before a slate of games coming so not just uncharted 4 so i i think there is definitely more coming out of that backlog and uncharted 4 i mean that's a big ip so it's nice to see that they are getting a little more comfortable in that respect and a port job is going to have a massive return on investment uh, also the first party stuff so games as a service this is another another thing that sony's been chasing for a long time even before games as a service was really was really prevalent right that's kind of like a been the huge thing for the past 
four or five years now, but even longer than that. Um, the thing is, Sony's always wanted that big budget uh, multiplayer title that they can really call their own. They've just never really had a major knockout success there. So they've tried this a handful of times, whether it was uh, Warhawk, Starhawk, um, Resistance 2 had a pretty uh, pretty big push for multiplayer with uh, 60 players. There was Mag, uh, two SOCOMs on PS3. Um, the Killzone franchise, and we had a Killzone day one on PS4, which didn't really hold up. I mean, these are all games that I like, a lot of you really like. They're they're great games. I enjoy them a lot, but they just weren't those knockout successes. And every publisher and the platform holders, they're looking for that next Fortnite. They're looking for that next Minecraft. They're looking for that next the next great idea that wasn't thought of just yet. Um, so unsurprising actually that they would want to maybe put uh, first party at the forefront of trying to trying to capture that right because if you can capture it it can totally eclipse all the money that's made everywhere else <laughs> for you know the all the things that they're doing right where they're dipping their toes into all these different services which is you know things like plus ps now um going outside of the console right so consoles are uh over time becoming less and less relevant to the overall picture of generating money for this business and remember it's a business that's their their bottom line at the end of the day so that's not to say that consoles are going away anytime soon right we even actually saw that physical software is still going to do quite well for the next five years right um that's why i think for as fast as technology moves it doesn't move as fast as people think it does i mean we're still going to be using consoles and controllers and even having the option to buy discs for quite a while if you remember during playstation 3 and 360 um quite a few analysts and so-called experts thought that uh, that was going to be our last console cycle obviously not the case in fact i think we'll have another traditional cycle after this one but there's just so many more avenues to earn money, right? And that's also why we had some job listings about um, PlayStation Mobile. So Sony's going to once again try some mobile stuff, which they're they're not a stranger to. They've done that before. Um, and that can look like those smaller bite-sized games that are, um, they can be monetized like crazy if they if they do well. If it's not just a simple little flash in the pan game and it has some staying power, that can also be a really great avenue for Sony. Uh, and then PlayStation Productions, which we're well aware of at this point. I mean, that's what it is. Uh, it's taking that... It's taking those well-known PlayStation IP and uh, putting it everywhere. The company wants to start collecting, right? They want to cash flow a little bit. Now, in terms of that very aggressive goal of more than 50% market share with PS5, uh, keep in mind that's, I'm assuming that's all revenue right across hardware, software, both physical and digital. And that's where Sony's coming to that conclusion with what they did on PS4 and what they're expecting on PS5. And it would be interesting to see how they're stacking this up, right? So it would be what for uh in the normal console space no handheld so they're including uh wii u x1 ps4 for that generation and then for this one it would be strictly the series consoles themselves and i would imagine switch because that can be played on a tv and there's really no other dedicated handhelds that are available right now well, i guess you could include switch Lite. um but it would be interesting how they're really coming to that number. I mean, it probably would work out in their favor if they even are including everybody because Nintendo would be hitting some peak years. So even though Switch is doing incredibly well, uh, who knows what this Switch Pro machine is going to look like. But there's that. And then also for as well as Game Pass is doing, that might technically work in Sony's favor of this revenue split because if most uh, Xbox customers are subscribing to Game Pass, uh, that revenue would be, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, would they include services revenue from other platform holders? Because if we're strictly counting hardware and software sales, then that's where it might work out in Sony's favor because Xbox owners wouldn't be buying as much software uh, as they previously otherwise would have, right? So it's interesting how they're coming to that number. But uh, I mean, we are seeing some early indicators that despite how well Microsoft's doing, despite, you know, Nintendo's uh, success, and they've always been this weird, um, they've been in a weird situation where they're a great additional platform to have. They're never really directly competing uh, with Sony and Microsoft. But it's just, uh, it's something where we're still seeing early indicators are showing that Sony's going to be moving a lot of hardware and they've always had a uh, global brand dominance. So Europe, they just do really, really well. Certain markets are basically free markets to Sony and they're going to be continuing that growth in uh, India, China, and Russia, like uh, we brought up earlier. So um, a lot of those things might really work to their advantage to potentially hit that more than 50% if they're really uh, bullish on getting to that.
And probably the, the biggest takeaway here, the key word that every investor loves to hear, growth. It's additional. It's not, this doesn't necessarily mean less first party content that's single player. It doesn't mean less of a focus on the console stuff. It means this is what we do well. Let's keep doing this. But also here are some other areas that we're exploring that can be key growth drivers. And that's what Sony Corporation is doing. Thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll talk to you tomorrow for Let's Talk PlayStation. We've got a lot of news stories to cover there alongside Horizon Forbidden West, that state of play. Can't wait. Uh, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.